join five master hunters on an age-old mission as the magical forests of France's Loire Valley become ground zero. Wild Boar Fever, season premiere August 31st on My Outdoor TV. Start your free trial today. It's a bluebird day in the heart of French hunting culture, the region of Sologne. A procession of cars winds its way through this classic estate, past forests and fields to the rendezvous de chasseurs, or the meeting place of hunters. This is the moment you've been waiting for, the entire off season. As the hunters gather their gear, the banter is relaxed, typical of any gathering you'll find in hunting camps around the world. But in the back of everyone's mind is the hope they will perform well today, that they will shoot safely and kill cleanly, that their training has been enough. Our hope is that someday you will be fortunate enough to take on the challenge of driven hunting yourself, Maybe you already do, but you're ready to take your shooting to a whole new level. Well, get ready, because this is a master class in the art of hunting driven boar, with one of the world's best here to guide you. And class is now in session. This is Wild Boar Fever. Aimpoint's Wild Boar Fever 11 is brought to you by Aimpoint, the future in sight. By Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. By Swazi, the world's most durable outdoor gear. And by J.P. Sauer & Son, guns for generations. So we arrived yesterday and today is the, the range day just to make sure that everything um, works because you know we flew with the guns and we disassembled them and now we've reassembled them and this is just to make sure that everything's still on track. Sighting in on a stationary target is the first step before any hunt or day at the range. Having complete confidence in where your bullet is going is crucial before moving on to moving targets. Let's go have a look. The, the height level is perfect now. And then I readjusted two clicks to the left. So we're, we're gonna be bullseye. Without a scope and without magnification, you can still be very accurate. Maybe something that not everybody would think when you don't have any magnification. And this is not me, it's the equipment that is able to, to reproduce this type of result every time.
Now that we've sighted the rifle in, and we know that from a mechanical side, everything's perfect, it's time to factor out the human side as much as possible. And it's the beginning of the season, and especially at the beginning of the season, it's really important to get your muscle memory back and to retrain your brain about what's important in terms of moving target shooting. And I like to yeah, come to the range and just take a few shots just to slowly get back into it and then intensify the training by maybe taking two shots at the same bore while it's running from left to right and then another two to also get the repeating action back in. But the most important part is really just to steady the swing as, as much as possible, to be able to have my red dot on a horizontal line as much as possible without any vertical movement. That needs to come out of the hip. So as little shoulder movement as possible, as soon as you start moving your shoulders, I, I get a, a vertical and horizontal movement that is erratic. So I try and, and have my shoulders as stiff as possible and move my upper body in one, uh, in one movement instead of having different parts moving at the same time. Up. So again, at the moment, it's not about speed of repeating. It's not about where exactly the bullet has gone. It's just about getting the muscle memory back of squeezing off the shot while my red dot moves through the bore. Once I'm happy with the grouping, will then start to move into a situation of where I want that shot on the board to be. Once I'm happy with that, we'll get into the mechanical uh, side of repeating the rifle, whether that is smooth. As you saw, I'm just sort of slowly taking one by one out. So there's different kind of stages that you can do to just perfect um, the training. But I think for me personally, it's really important just to build it up slowly and do it step by step and not rush it. Okay. You see, for example, here, I made a mistake in terms of the repeating. That can happen, it's the beginning of the season. And I didn't pull the bolt back all the way. And therefore, I had a little jam. And this is all part of the practicing, so for this not to happen tomorrow, I'm here on the range. So you can see from a speed perspective, it would actually also be quite possible to take a third shot. And maybe if we, if we really, really tried, you could probably take four in a row. So ideally, we'll take a few more shots, see how the grouping is, see how we feel, but I'm already beginning to feel pretty good about tomorrow. This year's group of hunters are all familiar faces to fans of the show. Frederick Honner first joined us on Wild Boar Fever 9. An avid hunter, Frederick looks forward to the start of boar season from one of France's great hunting estates. It's the pinnacle of the year and what I'm looking forward to the most. I mean, it's, it's amazing to be part of it. We know there is a lot of boar in the areas we're gonna, gonna hunt in tomorrow. So um, the ante anticipation is at, at the top. I mean, it's right off the, the beginning of the season for all of us. We've had one, two, three hunts maybe each. So uh, to have such, a, such an awesome hunt right at the beginning is, is just amazing and something I'm really, really grateful for. That's hard. That's Both better now. At the same time. Yeah, yeah, good. Very good. It's a bit low, but still might bring it forward a bit still, but in general, that's the, 
that's the kill zone there. So I'm quite happy with that. That's why it's always good the days before you go, just have a bit of practice and calm yourself down. Neil Davies was a part of Wild Boar Fever 9 in Croatia as well. As the lone American, Neil is probably the least experienced driven boar hunter of the group, much more comfortable swinging a shotgun than a rifle. Yeah, in the States, you know, we typically don't shoot much, uh, you know, many animals on the run. So whereas over here, it's kind of a standard affair. And uh, practicing is also something that is done over here, which, you know, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of uh, shooting cinemas and things like that or running boar ranges, which is actually a lot of fun to do. So uh, here's hoping that somebody will spring up a little cottage industry because it's great. Pull! Oh, it's exactly the same. Exactly the same spot. Seriously, the group's like that. Perfect. Perfect. I'm done. Thank you very much. <laughs> Pull. Yeah, good. Good to go. Dead. All right. Dead as can be. I'm holding here. I probably need to be holding yeah. here. At that range and at that speed, definitely. Good stuff. Alexander Norden is from Sweden. As a sales director of Aimpoint, Alex gets lots of practice in shooting cinemas and rifle ranges. But a final tune-up is always welcome before the season begins. This is always good. Uh, I would say it helps a lot because you have, I have a new sight. I have shot a few hundred rounds, but to have it on top of the 101 and so on, I think it really helps. And Felu, our proud Frenchman, who is welcoming all of us back to his home country. Very exciting to, uh, to have all the team again there. And uh, as you said, it's becoming a real team, a real friend, a real family now. So uh, can't wait to be, uh, to be at the stand, share the, the, the emotion and, uh, and the good, uh, good, uh, good drives together. OK. Let's keep some ball. Mm. Hey. hey! Number two is dead. Number one is still alive. Okay. Good. Great. Awesome. Same spot. Perfect. Perfect. No, it's really good. Really good. Really good shooting. I prefer this one. Yeah. <laughs> They're all good, but I prefer this yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Good feeling. Good to be confident. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. As evening approaches, the hunters settle into their lodging in the little village of Chamon sur Taron. Let's go. The wear of a long day of travel and range time forgotten in the excitement of the days ahead. What's that? Uh, no. The In the shadow of the village church's steeple, the group samples some of the famed local wines and cheeses, and the talk quickly turns to hunting. Big day tomorrow. I hope everybody's um, on form. I mean, we fired enough shots on the range, that's for sure. And um, I think it's time for dinner and an early night. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to tomorrow. Morning comes early in the Loire Valley. As the hunters fuel up on croissants and coffee, they eagerly await the line of cars that will take them to one of the finest hunting estates in all of Europe. Fans of the show will remember this grand hunting estate from Wild War Fever 10 and hunt organizers Benoit Vallier and J.P. Bogneuf. The pair bring the highest levels of excellence to a driven shoot. Months of preparation and planning are evident as the hunters receive their stand placements for the day and the realization of another season takes hold. You can shoot all the wild board except female to 60 kilos, okay? So you don't shoot female, please. Okay, we go in this car, please. And after months of anticipation, the hunt is about to begin. This is wild boar fever.
Aimpoint's Wild Boar Fever 11 is brought to you by Aimpoint, the future in sight. By Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. By Swazi, the world's most durable outdoor gear. And by J.P. Sauer & Son, guns for generations. The opening day of a driven boar hunt is a flurry of activity. Beaters and dog handlers, hunters and game keepers, all excited for the first horns of the season. Good luck, everyone. Fun. Huh? You made. Looks promising. Very first morning. Pretty overclouded. But this misty type of weather really puts you back into the wild boar feeling. So I'm just gonna start getting ready. Uh, Benoit said we can start shooting at quarter past. That's one minute past quarter past. So I'm just gonna start getting ready. Benoit, the PH told me this was one of his favorite posts, so I think it's a good one. Uh, so as always, safety has to go first. We had no solid backstop at this point, so we can't have water because the bullet might bounce. We have a shooter on the other side of the lake, so we can't do that one. So I think we're in a very, very good position here. It's also actually the post that Franz Albrecht was on last year and um, shot the biggest Kyla of the whole um, uh, of the whole four days we were shooting here. So I'm super stoked. Seems to be a good spot. He's on the spot where I was last year. Now I know that Frederick was here last year and he told me that once he had shot the Kylas, that he was allowed a very big old male came at the end of the drive. I mean, he never saw one like that in France, but he said maybe not even in Germany he's seen one like that. He said very big teeth, really old, big bull. One Kyler still came at the end two times. Two times? Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. I let him go very two times. One. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very big in the body, yeah? huge in the body. So there's a slight chance, because they are very territorial, that this male will come back. So I've got him in the back of my mind. <laughs> Mama. Mama, Mama. Mama, Mama. It was all that, the big females, and it's, it's quite a far distance to go for a small fishling. There's another bull in the background there. Mama with fresh ling. Back in the back in the back. was a bear. That was a bear. Wow. I mean, that boar must be 150, 160 kilograms or up. And we just had that female with her small freshling come through. And then suddenly in the background, I just hear something. And he looked like a bear. And I had a quick glance at his teeth, and his teeth look really good but also the whole body is just insane. So that might very well be the boar that Frederick saw last year and that he told me about, because he's bigger than anything that I've seen here last year or this year. What a giant. 
And I think the first shot was right on the shoulder blade. I was very surprised that it didn't go down. Um, and the second shot I put a little bit further in front. But what an experience. That was a huge, huge bore. There's a big Kyla in the group. Very big Kyla. I'm gonna be looking for tusks. Dance. We're in the heat of the hunt right now. This is Wild Boar Fever. <laughs>